welcome. You're watching India Today. Thanks so much for staying with us. Today we're going to be discussing education. Many questions on students' minds and the top voices in the field of education here to guide us. I'm Chethi Narula. Never before, remember viewers, has education suffered this level of disruption globally. Never before have over 1.2 billion learners globally been this confused about what to do next. Many students are now on the crossroads of changing tracks for the future even. Should I continue? Should I defer? Will e-learning be same as being on campus? Should I just study in India? These are questions on every student's mind today, not just in India, but all, all around the world, mind you. To clarify all these doubts and confusions, we have with us Dr. Mrs. Indu Shahani, a renowned educationist, Viral Doshi and Dr. Karan Gupta, two biggest education counselors in India on the show today. But first up, here's a look at the lay of the land. UNESCO, 73.8% of the world's student population stands to be affected by school closures. 1.29 billion learners find themselves out of school. 186 countries globally have been impacted by school closures. Never before has education witnessed a disruption as big as this one. The new normal through technology is evidently setting in. The opportunity for students, working professionals, young, old, to be able to consume more learning online is going to become a new normal. It's important for institutions of learning, whether schools, colleges, to adapt to this right now so that we can leverage it for the future. If you are carrying on with your admissions abroad and they are going to be online, then use our campuses to be the touch points for your online learning because peer learning is very important. But can online education ever replace the experience of being on campus? What should a student do next? Our top focus on India Today. Let's begin now. First up, let's bring in Biral Doshi. Viral, never before have we witnessed an education disruption of this scale. I mean, it's unprecedented to say the least. Uh, I don't remember being a student and witnessing something of this nature. Uh, how would you guide the students who have been accepted at the moment in foreign universities for the current academic year and the 2021 applicants going forward as well? Because parents, students, everybody at the moment confused. Universities are still to decide what to do next. And you were telling me offline, even God doesn't know what is happening. <laughs> A pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Narula. Um, let me begin by first talking about disruption. Whenever we talked about disruption, it was never about education. Hmm. It was always about businesses or technology. Hmm. It was the first time we are experiencing disruption in education, not only for students who are studying or about to study or already finished their studies, but even for the universities. Let's look at universities for a minute. How are they being disrupted? First and foremost, the endowments are drastically down mm. because the valuation of the shares have gone down. So obviously, that leads to lesser financial aid, mm. both for the mm. uh, homegrown students as well as international students. Two, the revenues have been lost because of sporting games and summer school, which are big revenue earners for them. They have all disappeared. Three, distance learning, maybe the call of the hour mm. in the fall term. Question is, what fees do we charge for that? Will students accept it? Mm. Four, enrollment. They have no idea how mm. many students are going to defer, how many will accept mm. admission. So how do you balance the budgets for next year? Number five, social distancing. How do you readjust the college to have six feet of social distancing between students in the classrooms and the dormitories? That's a big challenge for them. And six, a bigger challenge, you have lots of professors who are 50, sure. 55 plus. How do they come and deliver classes physically in the classrooms? Because they're a very high risk area at the end of the day. These are the challenges that the universities are facing. Of course, they're grappling with this. They will find some solutions. I think we will just wait and watch. Next month or two, I'm sure they will find solutions to this. Now let's go back. Uh, I'm, I'll go back to the class of 2021 who will be applying. What will be the disruptions for them? One, when they apply, financially right. is going to be a challenge for them because endowments are down. Two, deferments. A uh, lot of people mm. are going to defer admissions to next year. Mm. So let's say in a university you have 
2,000 students are being admitted every year and 10% are international and let's say that's mm. 200 seats and 20% of them differ. Mm. So the next year's cohort will be fighting for only 160 mm. seats. How do we tackle that? Three, how do we, students are worrying, how will we right. be evaluated by the students? Will the standardized testing be cancelled? Will it be optional? Will it be evaluating mm. us more on academics, on extracurricular activities? And four, even if you have to do extracurricular activities, how do we organize extracurricular activities in this pandemic? So here's my answer for the class of 2021 who will be applying. Mm. One, be very cautious of applying for financial aid. It will diminish your chance of getting admission. Two, be more realistic in your list of colleges that you apply to. Keep a lot of safety. This is not a normal year. Three, please focus on academics because that may be one of the prime factors you'll be admitted on if standardized testing becomes optional. Four, if you do get a chance to standardize testing later this mm. year, please do so. Five, as far as extracurricular activities are concerned, you will have to be innovative. You'll have to use more of the online tools because next six months, obviously, you're not going to be going physically anywhere. So through online tools, you can look at doing research work. There are mm. a lot of internship opportunities possible online. You can do debate forums. You can do music forums. You can learn a lot. So a lot of things are possible online also, but it's going to be a challenge. And please note that universities, when they will evaluate applications, whether from India or overseas, will take this into consideration. So don't fret about this too much. But six and very, very important, I would say, keep your doors but open. But between the apply. two, what will be your advice, Mr. Doshi, whether to go ahead and pursue uh, academics now, uh, defer it, uh, take it online, uh, and go for the current uh, uh, status quo, or then defer it and go ahead in 2021? How would you guide the students who come to you for counseling? Correct. That's a very good question for the class of 2020 who have just been admitted. Uh, they have a choice. They can either defer or they can start with distance learning and pursue it further. If they do take a deferment, the challenge is how do you plan the deferment? Of course, there are lots of options you can do. So if you want to do a deferment, my choice would be to six months right now from now to December when you do online things, whether it be competitions or online learning or online mm. concerts or online competition. Mm. And the next six months when things improve, you can physically do actually what mm. you want to do, whether it be research, community service or travel. But the challenge I still feel mm. best place, place, best thing for students to do who have been admitted, if the colleges are offering you distance learning, take it. Because you'll be with your same cohort, you'll understand your cohort better. You'll also uh, be able to understand how universities mm. teach you. You'll be doing projects, you'll be doing research work. So you'll be completely occupied and mentally challenged. Uh, yes, of course, it's one thing to do online courses, but doing it for six months, one year, it's going to be a big challenge. That's why I've been a big fan of recommending to people if the colleges are not going to be starting physically, start the distance learning courses. I know it is a challenge, but what is six months of your life in a four-year journey in college? It's only six months. And yes, even when you go in January, it will be challenging for you to adapt to uh, conditions overseas when it's so cold. But you'll have to adapt. These are unusual times and unusual things will have to be done. I just quickly want to bring in Dr. Karan Gupta on this. Uh, Dr. Gupta, if you were listening to Viral Doshi, he was talking about how deferring becomes key but uh, as far as a four-year course is concerned when it is uh, got to do with undergraduation or uh, you know for the students who are of course going to the UK to do a one-year MBA there's no other option but to defer which is a no-brainer uh, but what about the ones who are doing a two-year MBA in the US or two-year degrees post-graduation in the US or four whole years of undergraduation how would you guide them uh, very quickly very quickly so again, Chetty, I think, uh, first of all, thank you. Thank you very much, Chetty, for having me here. But I think the duration of the program is a key factor here. If you are doing a one or a two year program, you ideally should defer your admission mm. because also look at the time when they're going to graduate. The students are going to graduate in an economy which is not going to support any of their career pursuits. So a lot of them are thinking that if I defer my admission mm. and start in 2021, I most likely am graduating at a better time. So they got it. when you're looking at a short professional course, it's not just a question of being on campus or enjoying campus life or getting that experience. It's also it also a lot depends on your career progression and what career goals you have. So I think you've got to take that into account when you're talking about the fall 2020 or 21 masters and MBA candidates. For undergrad, yes, I mean I would look at that in two different sets of students, like one that have already been studying abroad and are back in India. And for these students, they're continuing their current semester mm. online. And for their fall semester, the same trend is likely to continue till their place of study becomes a safe zone to travel. 
But right. if you're talking about the freshers who are planning to go abroad for uh, the first time, right. sorry, please go ahead. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. I was telling you that if we if we talk about the freshers who've planned to go abroad for the first time, they are in a bigger dilemma because their options are complicated. For one, universities abroad haven't even decided if they're starting online or on campus, and most are taking a final call in June or July. And many universities are not even prepared to go online. They just don't have the infrastructure. These kids will have to evaluate the pros and cons of starting online and then moving to campus in Jan. And the pros are clear. You know, for your degree, we agree that spending a semester mm. is not a bad mm. idea. But Jan is mm. not the most appropriate time to arrive. Mm. Most of the West is cold, mid-year, adjustment is mm. harder. Mm. So these are the issues that I think mm. students should take into account. And um, yeah, that's what I want to say about the deferral. Right. And before I get to Dr. Shani about uh, Make in India, Dr. Shani, uh, do you think from what uh, Dr. Gupta and Mr. Doshi have said about uh, studying overseas, can online courses really replace the entire experience of being on campus? You work so much with all these exchange programs with international universities. You've been sending your students for years, from what I can remember, to these international schools as well. How do you see this pan out? So thank you so much, Jayati. And I know you've been a student of mine in HR College. And, uh, you know, I've yes, always, very always proudly been very so. passionate. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, very passionate about internationalization. We were among the first colleges to go into a lot of partnerships with universities abroad. But, you know, before I go to your uh, question, uh, question directly, I just want to uh, respond to both Viral and and here um, that you know always I have encouraged students to go abroad if they have uh, you know wanted to get this experience and so on but you know I have to tell you that now the parents are calling me up and saying first for the 2020 freshers uh, who will be joining in uh, they are saying what do we do do we send our children abroad uh, and you know do we get some of them have got some admissions also how do we go about this and I feel that there are three things. As a parent, uh, to a parent, I would really say that these are the three things important to you. A, health and safety of your child. How comfortable are you with them now That's sitting true. with other, other children? And, and how quickly would you like to, you know, how quickly will that happen? Secondly, return on investment. I think that's very important. And third thing is you're actually going there for an academic mm. experience. So. I'll, I'll come to your point about the online hmm. teaching in a minute. So I I would suggest, I mean, you know, hmm. we've been thinking about it and thanks to Viral and Karan hmm. and all of them who've been giving us these suggestions. I've always over the years not encouraged so much the undergraduates. I've always encouraged them for the postgraduates because I sometimes feel you need that maturity that level to get much, into, yes. into international. Okay, so the point of... Uh, how do how do we help those students who either want to go uh, in 2020 have got admissions uh, want deferment uh, may be able to get deferment for till 2021 and thanks to all the counselors who sat with mm. us and told us uh, we are starting what is called a golden mm. bridge a golden bridge would be a semester mm. or or uh, 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 year uh, and it would be a very general foundation program which would include business, uh, media and communication, um, uh, liberal arts and even data analytics. Uh, we've looked around the world and you know looked at this and mm. it could actually serve as a one plus two for the students. It could also serve as a one plus three if they are going to the uh, US and I think that one Normally, I would have said take a gap year, but gap year, sitting at home, that's not it. Mm. Uh, gap year is when you get want to get the experience. Mm. So I would suggest that, you know, uh, uh, we, are, we are very hopeful that our Golden Bridge year is something that we can offer as an alternative. Um, the uh, other thing you talked about, online teaching, you know, I, I, I don't mm. know whether I can really tell you my excitement about is the and is me because we on 13th march we created a war zone of faculty 
by 16th March, all the faculty were trained in online teaching and learning. By today, we have got over 3,000 classes that have been done um, with 150 faculty members, 3,000 3, hours, and you know it has been just amazing. This was the day I think I, I was really waiting for. When I used to say 21st century, I never believed that we would do this earlier. Online teaching was only 5%. And I feel that a large number of universities will be able to cope, uh, hopefully. And, you know, they are talking to us. Many universities are talking to us to say, will you provide us the hmm. in-school experience for our students who are doing online? Already University of Bath is talking to us to say that they might want to look at uh, touch points with us and you know this is especially for current this is for postgraduate students where they are only going in for mm. a year or two years mm. uh, you know almost six months being here they could do online with their universities and then mm. we could support them with their touch points and on the campus absolutely and you know you stress so much about study in india so say a scenario here you're talking about uh, you know the students who are in the interim they, either they've come back or they are in the process of taking a gap year and the golden bridge program and stuff like that could be very very uh, essential and come in very handy for them to bite their time in the right direction but uh, when it comes to completely you know quitting the idea of going abroad altogether can study in india become the next make in india and become a yes success? absolutely 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 uh, you know when we started is and is me that was my passion because the prime minister the national goals at that time were make in india skill india startup india and i used to say to myself why not study in india why can't we create world-class institutions here our faculty are very well renowned all over the world and our faculty are amazing we've got a lot of young right. faculty and they're doing some amazing job so i think yes please look at the option now of study in india probably a time has come when the indian universities will definitely match up to uh, programs for our students at least in the interim it's so great to you that's so great to you. Our Indian universities will and get a bit of a not flip. All... Uh, I mean, unfortunately, because of the crisis here, but yes, go on. But you know, Chetty, just to say, are we all not, I am at least, all, are we all not products of the Indian higher education system or the Indian schooling system? We are. So let's have faith we in are. our own absolutely. system. <laughs> let's have absolute faith in our system. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. So study in India is the next thing after make in India. Dr. Karan Gupta, many students also the ones who probably uh, do not want to study in India, but want to take uh, those Golden Bridge programs like Dr. Shani was speaking about. Uh, they probably would want to take a gap year as they are most likely to defer their semesters. Some would want to defer their semesters and even uh, Mr. Doshi just mentioned as to how deferring the semester is absolutely something which is a possibility because you, say you've made it to, a, to an Ivy League, why would you want to give up an admission of that uh, uh, stature? You've made it to a Harvard or a Yale or a Brown, you would want to continue studying there. So what should a student do during that particular gap year? Because sitting at home, most of them don't even have the traditional option of uh, taking up a job or doing what we used to do back in the day now a new normal has set in so what would your suggestion be as to how this gap year can be best utilized I think great question because at the end of the day we're going to see a large number of students deferring their admissions and a lot of them are going to have this question that what should we do in the interim year the key thing to remember here is that students should focus on improving their existing skills and learning new ones I tell students focus on the following. One, hmm. the best way to up your skills is take online hmm. courses on websites such as edX, Coursera, Udacity, Udemy, the list goes on and on. Students who are technically inclined can take business hmm. classes like finance and accounting, and students who are business inclined can take technical classes such as hmm. Python for everybody and digital marketing. These courses will look great on your resume and you'll also earn certificates for them. Now, you can even earn entire degrees online. So in this one year, hmm. if you want a degree from UCLA or UT Austin, both schools offer online degrees. 
times have changed now that the students have to get used to doing things online if people can perform concerts online do doctor consultation that even socialize it's not that hard for students to start learning online i also tell students take this time to learn a new mm. language spanish is a great option for students who want to study in mm. north america and if students have dreamed of starting their own business now is a great time to start start your entrepreneurship venture talk to entrepreneurs venture capitalists start refining your business idea and the ones who want to work i tell them take your internships online intern shala for example has posted 5500 online jobs you can do projects with companies and this is again something that comes on your resume if you're inclined to help others you could also mm. start volunteering with ngos and help the community even in this time of crisis people are working with ngos online and then i would mm. say the last part start connecting mm. with current students and alumni of your dream institutes online it's a very good time to build relationships and finally mm. read 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 if you want to do well in your standardized test you got to be good at english good at reading comprehension the more you read the better your vocabulary and grammar skills test scores are going to be important and even though some schools have made test scores optional many of indian students are going to have test scores and with admissions being competitive it's not a bad idea to do well so in the end now's a great time mm. to find your passion take psychometric tests online find out what careers are suitable for you and then start building your profile in the end seize this opportunity you're not going to get this time back we are living in disruptive times where it's more important to recalibrate ourselves for the better for the for the new world order sure absolutely recalibration for the new world order of course is the order of the day uh, viral doshi coming to you very quickly we've got 2 minutes left on the show from 2020 to 2021 there would be a paradigm shift as far as the application criteria is concerned what do you reckon that would be i think uh, it's obviously up in the air right now because i don't know what colleges are going to decide in the next two months but i think the focus should be much more on academics because if standardized testing becomes optional extracurriculars get limited because of online things academics will become very paramount and that's one thing i've been telling okay. students please focus on academics don't underestimate them don't think extracurricular activities or uh, standardized testing is going to help you because things are going to change this year and, and academics the best platform for them to judge a student so i would say academics is the main mantra with up which i would tell any student right now from now to 2021 focus on academics okay. believe me that will make you a winner for a college application All right uh, Dr Shani we've got last 1 minute left uh, okay. your closing thoughts yeah, sure. and that one last word that you'd sure. like to give out to the students so you know we've been doing a lot of discussion on what the new normal in higher education is going to be and to me it's going to be definitely digital after we've experienced this uh, transformation into all our classes into virtual classrooms uh, we definitely feel it's going to be digital but the good thing about this is and like karan talked about uh, you know skills developing skill we are now able to offer so many mm. different courses which we would not have been able to do if we had done it here so a since we have five colleges and five schools our design students can do management courses our management so i don't have to worry about scheduling and so on so it is three things for me a new normal interdisciplinary uh because those are the skills of the future that that people need um internationalization i mean truly all my faculty from abroad all our friends all our partners uh you know we are having so many sessions which they are thinking i have a young man omkar who is actually doing a phd in russia but he's teaching three times a week joshua from seattle is teaching twice twice a week wow. and i'm having janat from ecuador teaching uh, experiential marketing i mean i would have never imagined this had it not been for this so interdisciplinary uh, international and of course the amount of as as uh, uh, virul talked about academic i think the amount of intellectual discussions That's that are now going on are amazing so i think the future is very bright uh, whether so it's di digital or it's in in school experience we are going to create a a twinning program where it will be 
are also online and also on on campus because for many many days there's a harvard study which says that which has come out very recently which says till 2022 there will be social distancing and this is a research that has just come out from their school of uh, public policy and uh, public health and so i would say All that right. uh, you know, I would not be able to get everybody on the campus at the same time. So I think the future is definitely digital and and on campus. So I'm so happy to see all of you see the glass half full then half empty. And you know, for students who are watching this broadcast as well. So positive viral doshi dr karan gupta and dr indushani all talking about how this is going to be positive looking at the upside of how campus experiences are going to change how technology is going to be the new normal as well so education going forward has never been more exciting it looks like the new normal is more exciting than ever before and as dr shani was men mentioning more intellectual conversations also taking place with that it's a wrap from me cheti narula i thank you very much all three of our panelists for joining us in this exciting conversation. Thanks a ton. Hi everyone, Preeti Chaudhary here. Hope you like this video. For latest news and analysis, like and subscribe to the India Today YouTube channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon to stay updated. Thank you for watching.